Last time on Astronomical, we looked at what you can see with a zero-dollar telescope, aka your eyes. We looked at all of the marvellous sights that you can witness for free. Now though, I'm stepping things up a level as I look through multiple $100 telescopes in order to document what the night sky looks like through each of them. I'm then going to give my recommendation on what setup you should choose if you have a budget of less than $100, and the answer may indeed surprise you. Alright, let's get started. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Behind my back, I have the first telescope that I'll be reviewing for this series. The budget for this video is what you can see for a $100 telescope. And right now, I have a telescope that costs a lot less than that. This is the cheapest telescope I was able to find available on the internet. I present to you the Celestron Cometron. I'm not sure if it gets much more beginner than this. So in my hands right now, I have this very lightweight telescope. It has a three inch primary mirror and actually a fairly decent design, all things considered. I purchased this on eBay, used condition for 18 British pounds, which works out about 22 US dollars. So as far as we're concerned, this is very cheap for a setup. I'm gonna place it down on a table now because I wanna to showcase to you how versatile this $22 telescope is. Yeah, so this is the first telescope to kick off the series and I'm gonna just be blunt in saying this, don't buy it, just avoid this at all costs. It's not worth the money at all. It's gonna lead to more frustration than actual enjoyment from the hobby itself. Now, I should make myself clear here. I'm not saying don't buy this telescope because it's bad. I'm saying don't buy it because it's extremely limited in terms of what you can see. The primary mirror is 76 millimeters or three inches in diameter. We want this as big as possible because the more light we gather, the better the quality of our observations. Whilst the focal length is a measure of our magnification and for this tiny tube, it's very small. At 300 millimeters, the objects you observe are heavily restricted. For observing the likes of planets, star clusters, and the moon, we're going to want a higher magnification, which can be achieved in two ways. One is by making the tube longer, which is basically what we have here with the Celestron Astromaster 76. It's the same size primary mirror, but with a longer tube. The second is through the addition of a Barlow lens, which simply magnifies your view. A large focal length allows us to easily make out the brightest objects in our night sky such as the planets and moon, giving us a much better view than our naked eye. You can identify Jupiter's four largest moons as well as make out a limited amount of surface detail. As for our moon, well, you can see a lot of detail in its craters, which is very nice. Both of these telescopes were in used condition, which meant I was able to purchase them for well below $100. If you do have a budget under $100, then that means that you should be able to buy something like this. Okay, so this is our $100 setup. This is a used telescope, it's not brand new. So let's have a look what's inside. In order to get the most stars for my book, I went onto eBay and searched for the best used telescopes available for under $100. I found one I liked, and then two days later, it arrived. Right, so now it is completely set up. This is my telescope that cost me less than $100. And now I'm gonna put the camera inside the eyepiece holder so that we can explore the cosmos and see exactly what you can see for a $100 telescope. So the first thing to note with this blue wonder is that it has a much bigger mirror, 130 millimeters in diameter. The focal length is also relatively modest, meaning the night sky will still appear very bright as well as decently magnified. So why don't we start off by looking at one of our nearest stellar nurseries, the Orion Nebula. In order to find objects in the night sky, you need to have a decent sense of direction in terms of where to point your scope, and especially at this budget level, as the setups can be very fidgety and not to mention quite heavy. All worth it though, I suppose, when you get to see the moon in as much detail as this. These are the views amateurs hope for when purchasing a telescope, because even after all the messing around with the setup, seeing this for the first time makes it all worthwhile. But to be completely frank with you, if you do have a budget of under $100, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this particular setup. What I would recommend instead might surprise you. This is not a telescope. As you can probably already figure out, these are a pair of binoculars. I have bought these from the Amazon warehouse, which means they are in used, but like new condition. Um, but I really wanted to showcase them in this video because they are a very capable pair of binoculars. They are 25 by 70, which means you can get a fairly similar field of view to what you can with this telescope. The main difference being though, is that with these, you can find your target with a lot more ease. So if I want to point these towards right now, the star Betelgeuse, I mean, I can literally find it 
in a split second, just raising it to my eyes. And then I can take my time to look at it for as long as I want. The only thing that prohibits me from observing for too long is whether or not my arms get tired. But if that really is too much of a trouble for you, you can actually mount the binoculars onto a tripod and then just sit in the comfort of your lawn chair and observe the night sky. All right, hear me out. Is the quality of your observations going to get much better with this pair of binoculars as opposed to a telescope? Not quite. But are you going to have a far more relaxed stargazing experience? One that won't put you off the hobby forever because you spent hours setting it all up, trying to achieve a focus. It can be a nightmare, we've all been there. And it's because of this that I strongly believe binoculars are a more than justifiable option for the best beginner setup. You are giving a small amount of quality up in your observation for a tremendous amount of ease. Yeah, I get that it might seem a bit silly recommending this setup as opposed to that. But if you are spending this much on your setup, then it's very likely that you are a beginner to the hobby. And therefore, you want to develop a better understanding of our night sky before anything else. So yeah, I'd recommend these. When it comes down to which setup provides a better view of our cosmos, bigger is better. The Skywatcher 130 is on a whole other level to the others. And when it comes to observing nebulae, its views again are far superior compared to the others. With the binoculars being the easiest of the three to pinpoint fainter objects like nebulae in your field of view. And when it comes to planets, you should be able to see at least the faintest amount of surface detail on the likes of Jupiter, as well as the gaps of the rings around Saturn. My favourite thing to look out for are the Galilean moons four faint star-like points of light orbiting the gas giant Jupiter. You can watch them dance over the course of the night and even document them over the course of several nights. It is by no means easy to accurately demonstrate what you can see with your naked eye when looking through these telescopes. However, I have tried my best to do so here. For some of these shots, the camera I was recording with cost $800, which is massively exceeding the cost of the telescopes, but I'm hoping you can appreciate the insight I'm trying to give. Because it might not look too special right now on your screen, but nothing, and I mean nothing, beats the experience of seeing the universe for your own telescope for the first time. It doesn't matter if your telescope costs $100 or 100000 it is truly a one-of-a-kind feeling. So, on that note, my final verdict. The best piece of advice I can give to you is to buy secondhand. Please, oh please, trust me on this. You can get twice the telescope for a third of the price by buying used. If you're really interested in stargazing, then I'd actually avoid a telescope as your initial setup. There are so many parts that can go wrong, and these are made 10 times all the more agonizing when you're trying to fix them in the dark. Binoculars are a far simpler and quicker way to develop an understanding of our night sky. That being said, if you are diving into buying a telescope, then try to go for something above 4 inches. That's easier said than done. You won't find anything that size brand new for under $100. But this is what I just found from hopping onto eBay and typing in telescope. Some really good deals to be had if you don't mind looking for them. Next time on Astronomical, our spending allowance increases to a whopping $500, and we compare what we can see through these different setups that are within this budget. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for further videos like this. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.